Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Air Fiber 60 LR from Ubiquity Inc. This is a 60 gigahertz point to point long range radio or set of radios since you need two of them to make a point to point connection. The model number on this device is AF60-LR-US for the US version and the MSRP is $399 per radio. So if you need two of them, it's gonna be about 800 bucks for the set. But these have the capabilities of shooting a 60 gigahertz link up to 12 kilometers and actually more than 12 kilometers because if you go to the product page for the AF60, you'll see that they're running a contest right now for the longest point-to-point -point link, the longest 60 gigahertz point-to-point -point link. And the current record as of the recording of this video is 24.69 kilometers or twice the reported maximum distance of the AF60. All right, so let's get this thing out of the box. I already have one of them set up and waiting for this side of the point-to-point -point bridge. All right, and here is the dish itself. Yeah, look at that, absolutely beautiful. I love this design that they have on this thing. We also have in the box a PoE injector. This runs off of AT power or 802.3 AT PoE. All right, so this piece here is a little viewfinder that you can look through and sort of target the other side of your point to point link, assuming that you can actually see it, right? If it's, if it's too far, you're not gonna be able to see anything through that viewfinder. And then this also comes with the precision alignment mount. So this mount is basically made for changing the horizontal and vertical alignment of the dish with very minute changes using these two screws here. The top screw is for the tilt and the bottom screw is for your sort of left and right uh, so that you can really dial in the signal because connecting two 60 gigahertz point to point antennas together can be difficult. I mean, the longer range you go, it's like sort of like trying to touch, you know, the ends of two pencils together from a very far distance away. Uh, you have to take a lot of patience and just dial them in properly. And this precision aligning mount actually helps a great deal with that. Okay, and here is the actual brains of the operation. So this is the Air Fiber 60 access point or station right here. And it's a little bit hefty. Uh, but they have some sort of side support arms, which we're going to get to in just a second. And then we have some LEDs down the side of this for, uh, you know, whether the GPS is working, whether the 60 gig link is connected and uh, power and all that sort of good stuff. And then these two plastic pieces are sort of the side lobes that connect everything together. All right, so let's get rid of this. All right, so this just pops right in like so. And then once you have the actual antenna arm flush, there's a screw in the back to just really tighten it down and lock it in. I'm just doing it hand tight, but you can actually get a flathead screwdriver and tighten that in a little bit more if you need to. And then these side pieces basically connect everything together and they just slip on like so. There we go. So that essentially is the completed dish. You also notice there's a little section right up front here. You can pop this down. That's where you're gonna plug in your ethernet cable. And you actually run the ethernet cable into the back here. They've got this little rubber grommet that the ethernet cable runs through to make sure this thing is nice and weatherproof. And then it runs right through this plastic arm and you can plug it into the actual access point or station side of the point to point uh, antenna. So maximum throughput, according to the data sheet, is 1800 megabits per second, or 1.8 gigabits per second. This is a full duplex point-to-point -point solution. It also includes a GPS on board to make sure that all of the packets that you're sending back and forth stay uh, synchronized. Finally, there's also a Bluetooth radio as part of this dish that allows for easy setup using the UISP application for Android or Apple. Okay, so that's basically it for the dish. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing outside and see if we can't set up a point-to-point -point link. 
One of the Air Fiber 60s I have in this sort of makeshift stand right up here. Now this is gonna be just fine for our testing since we're only about 60 feet apart from the two antennas. But in reality, you'd wanna make sure that this is very, very stable. You, want, you do not want the dish moving like even slightly in order to maintain that 60 gigahertz length. I have the Air Fiber 60 LR link up and running and working just fine. Here you can see a dashboard of the access point side of my point to point link. And what we can see here is that we have an excellent link. Now granted this is only 27 meters apart, but the link potential bounces between about 98% all the way up to 100%, uh, you know, given that it's not that far apart. These devices are not that far apart from each other. Certainly if you were actually going to do a link that was only 27 meters, these antennas are way overkill for that, right? They make a smaller AF60, and then any of the other, you know, five gigahertz devices would work just fine at this distance as well. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sort of tour you through this interface just a little bit and point out a couple of things and then we're gonna factory reset both of these devices once more and I'm gonna set them up using Bluetooth from my iPad. So before we do the factory reset and rebuild of this point-to-point -point link so that you can see exactly how I did it, let's take a look at what we're seeing here. So we can see our signal strength for the local and remote device we can see our link capacity and throughput. Now throughput would show up you know, below this, this dark blue line here as sort of a light blue shaded area. If there was actually any throughput going on, right now there is not because there's nothing plugged into the remote side of this link. Down below we can see some device information, the name of the device, the model of the device, the firmware version. We can see which one's master and which one is the station. And then we also get our GPS information at the very bottom. By clicking on wireless, one of the things that you'll notice, if you're familiar with any of the point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint -point gear from Ubiquiti, You'll notice something right away, and that is that there's really not a lot of settings for these AF60 LRs. They're pretty much completely automated, like so there's no power output setting, right? You do have this Wave AI, which says it will adjust your link in real time to achieve the best performance and stability, and you can change the actual frequency of the devices, and if you turn off Wave AI, you can also change the channel width. But I just have uh, Wave AI on since that's default. If we open up advanced, the only option we have is to change our country, which it looks like you can't even change anyways. It's completely grayed out. So up here we have master mode on, meaning that this is the access point side of the point to point link. We have a wireless SSID, which is the link name. And then we have whatever password we set up between the two devices. If we click on the services tab, we can connect our device to UISP, form known as UNMS. We can do some web server options, some SSH server options, and some system logging. Clicking on system allows us to do things like factory reset or reboot the devices, back up the configuration, upload a new configuration, and then change some other things such as the LEDs, the device name, etc. We can also set our time zone. I'm Pacific Standard Time, so I will choose that, and we can turn on NTP if we like. Let's go ahead and save those changes. And then if we click on tools, we have the alignment tool, a discovery tool, ping tool, trace route, or speed test. Let's go ahead and run a speed test here. So we're gonna do a full duplex speed test between these two devices. Let's go back to the dashboard so that we can actually see the speed test happening. We're gonna click start.
And then you see these uh, circles up top are sort of filling up with the utilization percentage on each side, which looks like to be about, you know, 80 to 90% because of the speed test. And we're getting a receive average of about 850 megabits and a transmit average of about 850 megabits as well. All right, so speed test is done. 0.85 millisecond ping, 854 megabits on the receive, 853 megabits on the transmit, and a total throughput of just over 1.7 gigabits per second. Now, these statistics are amazing, right? Because these devices are way overpowered for only being 27 meters apart. Let's take a look at one from a client of ours that is a little bit further apart. So this is a 5.8 kilometer link. We can see we have a link potential of 86.5%. Total capacity, though, is still showing 1.75 gigabits per second. It says that it's a good link instead of an excellent link. I think the excellent link is anything above, like, I think it was like 93 or 94 percent. But we can see the total expected capacity of 1.7 gigabit, and this one had a pretty small throughput at the time we took this screenshot of 72.17 megabits per second. One additional thing to note about these devices is that the 60 gigahertz spectrum is more susceptible to weather, you know, rain and snow particularly, than other devices. So what we typically do, since this device does not have a five gigahertz backup radio included, is we will typically set up the Air Fiber 60 LRs and a secondary five gigahertz point to point, whichever one is most appropriate for the, you know, the distance that we're trying to push these packets. And then what you can do is set up OSPF routing between the two so that they can load balance or just be failovers to each other. So if you're a little bit nervous about implementing a high speed link here, well, you can do the high speed link so that it'll work fine when the weather's perfect and then fail over to that five gigahertz link, separate radios, but OSPF routed when there's any sort of issue with the point-to-point -point link. It's also good for redundancy if you have to upgrade one set of point-to-point -point devices and then upgrade the other set of point-to-point -point devices. That's how this one is actually set up in reality. We have the two Air Fiber 60 LRs pointed at each other at a distance of 5.8 kilometers and right on those same uh, poles or towers, we have another set of five gigahertz radios that serve as a backup. So I've now factory reset both of the AF60LRs. This one is going to be the access point side when I reset it up. We're going to use IP address 192.168.200.30 and this is the side that's actually connected into my LAN. This one here is going to be the station side antenna. We're going to use IP address 192.168.200.31. Alright, so I have UISP running on my iPad here and we can see that two devices have been discovered. The one with the MAC address ending in 17F is going to be the access point side. The one ending in 6A0 is going to be the station side. So let's set up the access point side first. So we don't have an access point to connect to right away. So we're going to hit the X and do manual setup. And we're going to turn this on as the access point side. The SSID we're going to give it is just AF60. We'll give it a nice password here. And then we're gonna click on network and we wanna set this up with a static IP address. So instead of DHCP, we're gonna choose static and enter in our IP address information. And now we can say done and save. All right, configuration saved. There we go. Now let's set up the second one. So now you notice that only the 6A0 says needs setup. So we're gonna click on that one. And once again, we're gonna do a manual setup. This is not the access point side. So we're gonna leave access point unchecked, but we wanna put in AF60 for the SSID and then our password. For network, we're gonna give this one a static IP address of 192.168.200.31 and a gateway. And we're gonna say done and save. All right, configuration saved, let's click on status. And after about 30 seconds or so, we can see that we have a great signal and we are connected over to the 17F MAC address Air Fiber 60 LR. Now everything looks great, but you see that it says device is not in UISP yet. Uh, and the UISP domain is unreachable. This is because I forgot to set DNS IP addresses when I added in the static network settings. So we're gonna click configuration, network, and then let's go down here to primary DNS IP. We'll put in my Pi-hole IP address and my secondary and save that. And now we should be able to assign this to a site in UISP. 
Now one thing that you probably didn't see is that it said nearby sites, and that's based on the GPS of the devices, right? It knows where these things are physically in the world, and it knows where my site is physically in the world, and so it automatically said, hey, you're right near this UISP site. Is this the one that you want to connect it to? And I just said yes. And there we go. We are now connected to the Sherwood Home site in UISP with the Air Fiber 60 LR. This is the first one. In fact, let me change the name. All right, we're going to call this LR1. And then I'm also going to add LR2 to the same site in UISP. All right, there we have it. Air Fiber 60 LR2 has now been assigned to the same site in UISP as Air Fiber LR1. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. That's all there is for the setup. These things are dead simple. I absolutely love the simplicity of these devices. One last test that I wanted to do here are some iPerf tests. And I have my laptop connected to the PoE injector on the station side of the wireless bridge, which then goes over about a 100 foot cable to get to that Air Fiber 60 LR. Then it goes across the wireless link to the access point side of the wireless bridge. From there, it's another 100 foot cable into my garage, which goes up into my attic to a different switch and then back down into my office. So I'm going through like three different switches across a wireless bridge and through a few hundred feet of cabling in there. So we'll see what kind of speeds we can get with these tests. I have disabled wireless on my laptop, so I am 100% going across this wireless bridge. Let's check out the results. All right, so the single threaded iPerf test got us about 681 megabits per second. Let's do a five threaded iPerf test next. All right, and the five threaded iPerf test got us 869 megabits per second. So that's pretty good. That's basically about the same speeds that we were seeing when we did the speed test within the OS of the wireless bridge units themselves, uh, or about 850, just around 850 megabits per second. So looks like we're getting full speed out of the wireless bridge. All right, so there you have it, a look at the Ubiquiti AF60LR. Now keep in mind, these radios are $399 each and you need two of them to make a point-to-point -point link. The long range devices are for distances of up to 12 kilometers. If you do not need to go that far, you can also get the standard Ubiquiti AF60, which is $299. It'll go up to two kilometers distance, but it also includes an integrated backup five gigahertz radio link. So instead of having the separate five gigahertz radio that I talked about earlier, the standard AF60 for shorter distances has that five gigahertz radio included. You don't need to worry about OSPF routing or anything like that. It handles all of the failover between the 60 gigahertz radio and the five gigahertz radio within the unit itself. All right, that's gonna do it for this video on the AF60LR. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.